So we've just seen this theorem that if f is a homomorphism of Lie groups from um, g to h, then um, there exists a linear map f star from little g to little h, which is a Lie algebra homomorphism. So it preserves the bracket such that there's a nice formula holds f of x x equals x of f star x for all x in little g. So today I want to ask the question, what about the other direction? If I'm given the Lie algebra homomorphism between little g and little h, do I get a big F, a homomorphism from g to h defined by this equation here? Well, let's do an example and um, see. So let's take g and h both to be the group u1 of unit complex numbers. So what's, what's the Lie algebra then? Little g, little h, they're both equal to the imaginary numbers considered as a real vector space. So we get, you know, for any homomorphism, any smooth homomorphism from g to h, we get um, this linear map f star from little g to little h. So being a linear map, um, there's only really one possible thing you could do which is rescale right because little g remember is the imaginary numbers that's a one-dimensional vector space little h is also a one-dimensional vector space so the only linear map from the imaginaries to the imaginaries is um, f star of i theta equals i lambda theta for some lambda in r right the only thing you can do is rescale is that a Lie algebra homomorphism? Well, it's a linear map, but does it preserve the Lie brackets? So f star of i theta one, i theta two, is that equal to um, f star i theta one, f star i theta two? Well, yes, it certainly does, because in this case, the brackets are just zero because the imaginary numbers commute with one another. So both sides here are zero. So there's nothing to check. Any linear map here is a, a Lie algebra homomorphism. So we're saying any homomorphism from u1 to u1, any smooth homomorphism, is of the form f of e to the i theta equals e to the i lambda theta for some r. Oh, sorry, for some lambda in r. But which lambdas can occur? Well, not all of them. So in order for this to be a well-defined map, e to the i 2 pi, which equals 1, had better go to the same place that 1 goes to. And 1 is e to the i 0, and that goes to e to the i 0. So this tells us e to the i 2 pi lambda had better be equal to 1, which tells us lambda had better be an integer. Conversely, if lambda is an integer, this is a perfectly well-defined map. It's just raising e to the i theta to some integer power. So you can see not every Lie algebra homomorphism can be exponentiated to get a Lie group homomorphism. In this case, it's uh, only the rescalings by an integer. So let me just state this dilemma Um, the maps fn of e to the i theta equals e to the i n theta, where n is an integer, are homomorphisms from u1 to u1, and every smooth homomorphism is one of these.
So the integers come in here because the group U1, being a circle, has some interesting topology. So here's a picture of the group U1. It's the unit circle in the complex plane. It has this winding number. If you have a path that starts at the identity and goes back to the identity, it has to wind some integer number of times around the circle. And we're going to count that as a positive integer if it goes anti-clockwise and a negative integer if it goes clockwise. So this z here is related to the winding number. of paths, or let's say loops, in U1. So it's something topological. So it turns out that there is a topological condition you can put on your groups, something which basically says any loop is contractible, um, which ensures that any Lie algebra homomorphism starting at this group, going to another group, will exponentiate to give you a Lie group homomorphism. So let me first state the theorem. This is a theorem due to Lie. And then I'll tell you what the words mean. So let G be a simply connected matrix group. And H be any group, any matrix group. Um, um, then for every Lie algebra homomorphism, uh, which I should call little f, going from little g to little h, there exists a uh, smooth uh, homomorphism of groups, capital F from big G to big H, such that F star equals little f. And the key assumption here, which fails for the group U1, is that G is simply connected, which I haven't described yet. Um, so what does that mean? Let's get a new page. So this is an idea from topology. Uh, it applies to things much more general than matrix groups. So um, a space X, this is going to be a topological space. It doesn't really matter. You can think it's just a matrix group. Uh, a space X is simply connected If for every loop in X um, there is a, a null homotopy. So I've done that thing of uh, defining one word that you don't know in terms of some other words you don't know. So um, what do these words mean? Well, a loop is a continuous map, say gamma, from the interval 0, 1 into x, which is, you should think that this interval is some sort of time interval, and gamma is a path that starts somewhere at gamma of 0 at time 0, and it moves around gamma t until at time 1, it gets back to where it started, so gamma of 0 equals gamma of 1 and it should be a continuous map. So if X is a matrix group, this just means that gamma is a one parameter family of matrices whose entries depend continuously on T, some parameter T. And what is a null homotopy? It's a map H from zero one times zero one into X such that, so let me draw 0, 1 times 0, 1. It's uh, a space with two parameters, so it's a square, right, so it's side length 1 in both directions. And 
So we should think of this as a family of loops. So H is supposed to be a family of loops. All based at the same point. So in other words, if I restrict attention to a horizontal line in this square, what I get is a loop whose endpoints are the same as the endpoints of gamma. So if I call this coordinate T and this coordinate S, then H of sort of S zero, uh, sorry, no, H of S comma zero equals H of S one uh, equals whatever this point is. Let, let's give this point a name. Let's call this little x. This is the this is kind of base point where all our loops are based. And um, so h of zero t. So the loop I get by um, just looking at this bottom edge of the square. This is gamma of t. And the loop I get by looking at, uh, at s equals one, so h one t, the top of the square, is the constant loop that just sits at the base point x. So here's a picture. There's my loop gamma. As s varies, I get a family of loops, and in the end, I get the constant loop at this base point, little x. And I should say H is a continuous map. Okay, so it really is just saying any loop can be contracted. That's the informal way of saying this definition. Uh, and the circle certainly is not simply connected. It has this you know, loop that winds once around, a loop that winds twice around. They're not homotopic to the constant loop that winds no times around. So if you want to learn more about this, I've got some videos about um, topology and the fundamental group. Uh, that you can watch to learn more about this idea. Um, so in the next video, I want to tell you something about the topology of the kinds of groups we've been meeting. So things like uh, the rotation group, the orthogonal group, um, and, and introduce some new groups like the unitary group and talk about their topology. Um, and then hopefully we'll have a class of groups to which we know this theorem applies, this lead theorem.